couple of weeks. It just aired in Canada, and I'm super proud of it. And um, it's called Seconds to Die. That's next week. Next week on sci <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, let's open it up for questions and see what we can find out. Hi, Amanda. Um, I enjoyed you on Stargate for years and years and years, and Samantha Carter is definitely one of my favorite characters, but I wanted to ask you a supernatural question. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you could give us an insight into your time on Supernatural. Um, I know it was only a few episodes, but I was interested generally sort of in your experience working on the show with Jensen and Misha and Mark, and um, particularly in, if you could offer any insight on the scene that you had between Naomi and Dean that first meeting on, on the uh, hospital. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, well, first of all, Supernatural came about, they offered me three-episode contract with potential for more, and I ended up uh, doing seven episodes for them in their eighth season. So every script I would get after the third episode, I was like, well, they're going to kill me. Nope, they're going to kill Nope, 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 nope. Uh, <laughs> but I, the beauty of Supernatural, and forgive me for those of you who were here yesterday, is that I never knew whether Naomi was good or bad. So I had no secret agenda with that character. Um, most of my scenes initially were with Misha, and I don't know if any of you have met Misha. <laughs> he's so funny, and he's so deadpan, and I am uh, a giggler by trade. <laughs> I think that if, if I had to put anything on my resume, giggles well. Um, so he constantly had me in stitches. Um, and Jensen, well, all of them, I have to say. Uh, if you've ever heard anything negative about Jared or Jensen or Misha, it's a lie. They are phenomenal, phenomenal people. These, especially uh, Jensen and Jared, for them, to carry the show, going into their ninth season, to be as massively popular as they are, they could stand to carry a lot of ego, and um, they don't. They're absolutely lovely, welcoming, um, so gracious, glad to have you on the show, Amanda, just like so sweet, and also distractingly good looking. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little fangirly when you, you know, arrive as a guest star on a show and you're like, hey, hi, 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 uh, but they, they're just amazing. And working with Jensen in that scene, because it's so, again, I didn't know what Naomi's agenda was. I'm still not sure that I understand what Naomi's agenda was, except ultimately to protect heaven, but she had really weird ways of doing it. So, uh... I went through that show sort of blind in a way. It was like, I just have the words on the page and my fellow actor and the director and that was it and off you go. And it was kind of liberating to not know where the character was going. Also frustrating, but, <laughs> but ultimately very liberating. I had a great time on that show. I would happily go back if they could bring me back to life. Thank you. Yeah, wings. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what people keep saying to me. There were no burned out wings. You're good. <laughs> and can an angel really die? I don't think so. Hi. Hi. Um, so, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that um, Saint, uh, Stargate was my well, first one, my first sci fi show, and it was my first grown up show. I graduated from TBS. I have to watch a grown-up show. Um, so really, Sam and you know Janet, they were like my my first glimpse at who I wanted to be when I grow up. So I really wanted to thank you for like giving me this vision of like the, the strong and you know capable but yet feminine woman that I wanted to be. Um, when I grew cool, up. thank you. Um, and I also wanted to ask you um, in filming uh, Sorry in Sanctuary and making. Was there like a, a episode that was like really emotionally hard to get through and like, oh, I can't do this? There were, there were a couple. I mean, <clears throat> Stargate had some pretty hefty emotional episodes. Um, and now I have to remember the titles of 200 plus episodes. <laughs> Point of View, I think it was, where I played the alternate Sam who was married to the alternate Jack who died. And then alternate Sam is with a live Jack. And we did, I remember shooting this scene 
because I ended up crying for like five hours. And Rick kept turning to me going, stop crying. <laughs> I was like, I did that to keep it going. <laughs> and that was really, I was exhausted after that. But it was, it was just like to, to wrap your head around that concept of, you're my husband, but you're not. And I've lost you, but you're here. And <laughs> uh, so that was hard. Heroes was a very hard episode for all of us to shoot. That was really hard. Um, Grace was a difficult episode. Uh, just because it was, she was so far out of her element in so many ways. Um, what about Death Knell? Death Knell. Oh, Death Knell. Yeah. Death Knell was exhausting, but fun. I, I like getting covered in dirt and blood, and I loved rolling her. You know, they're like, oh, she's not dirty enough. I'm like, I got it. I rolled her. That was hard. The what? Meridian. The one where Daniel dies. Daniel which one? Which time? <laughs> <laughs> God, that man died more on Stargate. The main time. Uh, yes, obviously. Uh, anytime one of the major characters is in peril and we have to react to that, it's intense. Uh, it was Meridian at the end of season five. Yes. Oh, so then we didn't know if he was going to come back. Yeah. That was very hard. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> Daniel was in. First time. Um, with Sanctuary, obviously, the episode where Ashley dies, um, on so many levels, I had a really, really hard time with that. And doing the scene with Amelia, uh, first of all, the scene where I shoot her, uh, and she was, she, I don't actually, she makes the heroic decision to whisk away, um, and then doing the funeral scene. Um, I don't know if you can see, I'm sure you can actually see it in the funeral scene. My eyes are so puffy because I was crying on screen and I was crying off screen. And I would go to my trailer and say, pull it together, Amanda, come on, pull it together. And then I'd walk out and Amelia would be out there and be like, <laughs> So uh, that was very, very difficult. Um, but Sanctuary was such a, gosh, it was like so joyful to shoot that show because we were so involved with it from the ground up and every element of it I was so aware of. Unlike Stargate, where you go in as an actor and you get the script and you don't know everything that's gone on behind the scenes to get that script to where it is. The Sanctuary, we, you know, I knew. And, uh, and I had been in the edit suite for all the other shows and helping with the music and all the things that you, know, you get to do as an executive producer. So it was just so much more kind of flowing through my veins. Um, so it was a very emotional show, and when we finished season four, we were like, well, this is awesome, we get a whole new sanctuary, see you next year. And there was a little part of me that was like, what if we don't come back? And none of us wanted to admit it, so we sort of did a whole see you later, <laughs> which I think was probably a good thing. If we knew that we weren't coming back, it would have been absolutely awful. We probably wouldn't have made it through. It's like the very last scene that we shot for Stargate SG-1. Um, and Rob Cooper directed the show, and he very wisely chose that the very last thing that we would do is walk through the gate. That would be the last shot that we would shoot on SG-1. And um, you can see in the pictures, I mean, Christopher could barely hold it together. I was crying, Michael was crying. It was so emotional. And the entire production crew, it was like two in the morning, and people came back to set to watch us film the last going through the Stargate. So the gate room was full of people crying. We shot it, cut, tears and hugs all around. And then Michael Christopher and I stole away upstairs to the briefing room, just the three of us. And we put our arms around each other and we looked down at the gate and it was like, well, that happened. <laughs> that decade just went past. <laughs> and it was actually the first thing the three of us had done when the show started. Before we started filming, we were wandering through the sets together and we came upon the Stargate and went, whoa. And so to end it with the three of us standing there looking at the Stargate, arms around each other, is incredibly emotional. Yeah, it's a great journey. Thanks. Thank you.
My question is not related to Stargate or Supernatural, actually. I was wondering if you could travel 500 years to the future. <laughs> <laughs> you ask this question of everyone? Yes. 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 Okay, well, you can tell by the audience, titter, titter. <laughs> question. I have a fascination with history. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to go back 500 years, though. That was pretty grim. <laughs> That's exactly what the last doctor said. Really? Um, but 500, I don't know, well, are we still going to be here 500 years? <laughs> Jettisoned into this big white abyss. <laughs> oh, I guess we didn't make it. <laughs> should have been more conservationist. <laughs> uh, should have taken care of the planet. Um, 500 years in the past. Yeah. Ooh, Spanish Inquisition, not so much. <laughs> no indoor plumbing. Uh, and the plague, there's the plague, and the dancers and the plague. But imagine what you could do going back 500 years. Of course, then you'd be faced with the grandfather paradox of changing the timeline. I'm my own grandpa. Um, I think I, I still think I'd go to the past. Yeah, thanks. I'm gonna, but I'm going to ruminate on that for a while. <laughs> Considering how little I knew about what was happening to me in season eight, <laughs> I can't answer that question. Uh, the last shot that I did, um, I, you know, I said thank you so much and hugs all around, and and then I said, so I, I guess this is it. Thank you for having me. And he said, oh, maybe, maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, so I might be back. And he's like, ah, I don't know. They're very non-committal, which yeah. is. <laughs> Frustrating, but lovely. Um, so I, mean, I would love to go back. I would go back to that show in a heartbeat. It was really fun. And it was a fun character. And I would like to see if Naomi is one of the fallen angels who's come back to Earth, what would she be doing? I'm thinking barista. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Except this vision of her in a coffee shop and, you know, Sam and Dean walk in. Would you like an extra shot with that? Okay. Come on. Phone? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You're so good. Um, how am I working doing this scene, the multiple Sam scenes? That one started yeah. where there's like 15 or something yeah. of us. That was actually really, it was interesting because we would shoot it now with the technology that we have so differently than how we shot it. What we did uh, in that particular episode was we locked off the camera. And so there was a specific camera move, and then it locked. And then I ran and changed and took a new position. And they would lay that lock on, and then I ran and changed and took a new position. The whole walking past with the coffee was like the script supervisor going five, four, three, two, one. Do you want a coffee? No, thanks. And so it was very different. And we, I think we had a shadow effect that we could see on one of the monitors where you could see where the other Sams were so we weren't blocking each other in the shots. But it, now we would shoot it against a green screen and it would be a completely different ball of wax and we'd probably have a, you know, motion control. I think we may have even had motion control on that, but it would, it would be very different. It was, it was really fun, but initially they had a bunch of extras sort of with their backs to camera playing with different Sams and that wasn't working out. So I was running out, grabbing an extra and saying, okay, take off your clothes quick, change with me. And changing into whatever they were wearing and then running back and then grab the next extra. Hey, what do you got on? Okay, that's different. Come on, let's go change. <laughs> so it was a little weird. <laughs> Fun. 
Um, one of my favorite starting episodes is Window of Opportunity. Yeah. And um, I was curious <laughs> if Sam was the one stuck in the loop, aside from solving the problem, what do you think she would have done with her Window of Opportunity? If Sam was stuck in that time loop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a no-brainer, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, no consequences? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> I, I, I think, well, maybe it's just Amanda. But <laughs> I, think, I think Sam being as upright and, and very military and following the rules would might maybe take that opportunity to break them and haul Jack into some locker room somewhere. <laughs> and he wouldn't remember. <laughs> okay, that's what he did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We definitely wouldn't waste our time fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Amanda. Um, I had a question about the clothing for sanctuary for kids. When are we going to get the kids' size kit for them? Excellent, excellent idea. Um, we haven't had a huge amount of requests for that, but now we do. So uh, I'll talk to our merchandisers about it. Okay. Even if we just got a couple of kid sized t shirts would be cool, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that, yeah, definitely. Uh, you, you're directing shows now that are shown in many countries throughout the world. Some of these countries have their own political agendas that refuse to allow certain concepts. In. As a director, do you have any say in uh, how the shows are produced and therefore released into that? No. As a director, no. Uh, I get the script. My job is to tell that story that's in the script. I get a certain amount of freedom in terms of how I shoot it. Uh, certainly with Primeval, I was able to work with the writers on aspects of the script and a little bit with Continuum, although it was such a solid uh, came in so solidly, but no, once I deliver my director's cut, um, then the executive producers take it and, and they do their cut and the network has notes based on that cut and then, yeah, it's out of my hands. It's very hard because it's, you're very precious as a director. It's like, well, don't lose that shot. And I did this massive, you know, act and a half fight sequence that I did a lot of slow-mo, which was really super cool and, and a lot of it didn't make it in because of time. <laughs> Because you know it takes longer in slow mo, as it happens. But I delivered a pretty tight episode, and they, you know, there's changes. So no, as a as a director, absolutely not. As an executive producer on Sanctuary, um, we were driving how the show was going, and because we didn't have a big studio, we had a little bit more creative freedom. But none of the countries, like we were shown in Afghanistan, uh, was one of the markets that bought the show, which I thought was really ironic considering that I'm wearing pencil skirts and stilettos and carrying a gun. I wasn't sure how that would go over, but it, it did well there. So, uh, but we don't target it for specific audiences. We create the show and then, like any show, people are going to love it or they're not going to love it or there's things they like or there's things that offend them. You can't, you know, you can't be the slave to that many masters and expect everyone to be happy, so we just create what we think is a really good show and hope people enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that when you were on Stargate, you had some Air Force officers, uh, some women on set with you. Did you learn anything from them, or did they tell you uh, anything about how you should play your characters? You Absolutely. We had, uh, we had Air Force liaison who came up and spoke very specifically about how the relationships in the Air Force worked. Um, I was able to talk to a captain, a female captain in the United States Air Force who I spent a great deal of time with um, talking about certain aspects of the character. A lot of it was protocol, you know, how to stand at attention properly, how to do a proper salute, how to carry your guns, um, and the hierarchy of how the military works. So yeah, we were able to to work with the Air Force, and, and like I said yesterday, I met with a Navy SEAL who gave me a whole bunch of insight into combat and what that means, uh, and then going to um, Qatar when they were flying the missions to Afghanistan after 9-11, meeting with people on the ground there. So absolutely, I sucked it up like a sponge, anything you can tell me. So we were very respectful of that, and the military had a say. Our, all of our scripts went to the Pentagon before we were allowed to shoot them. Did they make any changes on them? Yeah, yeah, they did. There was a couple where um, 
uh, the relationship between Sam and Jack became a bit too close for the Air Force's liking, and we had to pull back on certain things. Um, and that, I mean, it makes sense, right? It is the military, even though we're doing a show, we're honoring um, the, the branch of the military, military that we're portraying, so we have to be true to that. Um, except, you know, in alternate realities. <laughs> okay, out of all the characters you've portrayed over these years, which one did you like best? I don't know that I could say. I mean, Sam Carter is, I grew up. I became a woman playing Sam Carter. I came into my own. So I love her. Uh, but I love Helen Magnus, too, because I think that she is, um, she's so unique, and she's such an enigma in so many ways, and she makes so many crazy decisions, and she has such an incredible history, and I find her fascinating. Um, I don't, I'd like to take her for tea, <laughs> you know, and find out what makes her tick, whereas Sam, I felt like it was such a symbiotic relationship, if you will. Uh, that I felt like I grew up with her. So I don't know that I, I don't know that I could pick a favorite. It would be an interesting if you could do a show with the two of them together arguing about something. <laughs> yeah, and apparently there's some fanfic. <laughs> Thanks to that, a little bit. Or maybe they're not arguing, but I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. No, but somebody mentioned it yesterday. They're like, have you read any of the Sam and Helen fanfic? And I'm like, ooh. Okay. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, what was uh, your favorite episodes in the, either uh, Supernatural or uh, uh, Stargate? Whoa. Let me just cycle through my Rolodex at 200. And, uh, I always say that I love Heroes because I think it was the quintessential... Stargate episode. Uh, it was an amazing two-parter. It started out as one episode, and because it was so huge with such a massive story to tell, it ended up becoming two episodes. And Saul Rubinick actually drove a lot of that. He had a lot to say about his character and what he thought he should be doing, and it just ended up becoming such a huge story. And of course, losing Fraser, it was, for all of us, it was such an emotional episode. There was amazing action. There was an amazing anger and um, sadness and I just I think that it sort of it brought every character up to the forefront of their emotions so I think that that's one of my favorites in terms of sitting back and watching it um, I loved Grace I loved playing that episode um, Supernatural uh, I, I'm not as familiar with the names of all the episodes but the one the one where she meets Dean on the houseboat and Taxi that driver. relationship. So what's it called? Taxi driver. Taxi driver. Thank you. I know a little slice of Kevin and <laughs> taxi driver. Um, but I like that one. I loved playing those scenes. Thank you.